What up, it's your boy T Bear and reaction the days from Friday. So we're about to get into the meat and the tales of Films Friday. That is the dead meat kill count. And like I said, this week this couple holiday weekend, I'm gonna take a little break from my usual one to do the uh ones for both Christmas and New Year's Eve. And I think this have like a little new thing, but anyway, we're gonna check out the kill count from Grimless 2, the new bash. Now this is the one I watched more than the first one. Uh, like I used to, used to come on all the time on HBO at one point, like like crazy. Uh, I used to watch it. Has a lot of pop culture in this one. Um, or, or, you know, the first one had a little bit more, but this one, after the big success of of it, had a lot of pop culture in this world too, including one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, the host, the one only Hulk Hogan, as well too, and many others. So we gonna check out Gremlins 2 kill count in case you wonder why I'm, I was like this early uh, page, Patreon but now I'm saying this not, a, not like no split sub version so like that uh, one that's only exclusive to the Patreon it's just an early release so I'm so I get I, so I'm, I'm doing the reaction in there but I want my reaction will come out the same time as the the, the original one so the uh, official reach day so no harm no foul just do that do I can while I'm at a gig today. So anyway, without further ado, let's check out Grimless 2. Let's get it. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims nice in all movie. our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Gremlins 2, the new batch, released in 1990, six years after the original. Mm -hmm. Gremlins 2 proudly mocks the very concept of a Gremlins 2, mm -hmm. which Joe Dante thought should never exist in the first place, mm -hmm. even though Gremlins was a record-breaking hit for Warner Brothers. The first one is Warner's third highest grossing film ever. Dante felt the original had a proper ending, and was too worn out by its stressful puppet-filled production. He declared to make a sequel that would only be for profit, despite how much the studio wanted it. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers spent the 80s trying to do it without him, with ideas that included sending the gremlins to Las Vegas, and of course, outer space. Eventually they caved and gave in to Dante's demands so he would give them a sequel. And what did he ask for? Five times the budget of the first mm -hmm. film, and complete creative control. Okay. I know people think of the director as a film's highest boss, but they're not, and complete creative control is not common for them to have. Have. Dante decided to wield this power with absolutely no responsibility, mm -hmm. making a self-deprecating, self-aware sequel that was sure to alienate audiences. He and returning star Zach Galligan called the result Unfiltered Dante. Gremlins mm -hmm. 2 moves away from horror entirely, turning the gremlins into wacky villains who are basically cartoon characters. Mm -hmm. Dante clearly has a love for that kind of thing, thus this movie's opening segment featuring Bugs Bunny mm -hmm. and Daffy Duck, and thus why he'd go on to direct Looney Tunes back in action, oh, which I maintain is easily the best live action Looney Tunes movie. Suck it, Space Jams! Oh, Gremlins shit. 2 annihilates the entire concept of sequels. The original Gremlins exists as a movie within Gremlins 2, and Gremlins 2 itself is revealed to also be just a movie. It's straight up manic, with gag after gag, and no real focus on story beats or realism. I mean, at one point, a guy rides a secret pneumatic too. This shit is dumb as hell, and I love it. <laughs> What's great about Gremlins 2 is that it's still a fully competently made movie. The gags are clever, the characters are enjoyable, yep. and there's plenty of satire to yep. go around. Joe Dante intentionally made a bad movie to mock the studio, and it still ended up being a lot of fun. It it's was. more evidence that he's one of the most underrated genre filmmakers. Nice. And I'm not just saying that because he was nice when I interviewed him at his house that one time. Quick note, this movie is so insane it caused a first in Kill Count production. Since mm -hmm. my return, most episodes have a first draft written by either Tim or Jeremy. Then I'll do a pass, adding information from both my and Emma's extensive research and then Zor damn Emma hold on a second nice sure Emma it's almost there right there extensive research and then Zorin will do a joke pass from which I pick and choose his jokes you can always pick more <laughs> of course. I pick enough but of this course. movie was so batshit fucking literally that all four of us writers had to do full passes on this thing in hopes we could explain what was happening on screen did we succeed we fucking better have I worked hard on this final amalgamation but I'll let you judge for yourself mm -hmm. for the last time in 2022 let's get to the kills 
The movie begins with a Looney Tunes short, mm -hmm. portending that this about to be a silly one. The, 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 that's a title card, folks! Mm -hmm. And the, 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 that's stock footage from Superman for the Quest for Peace? Okay, wow. sure. Whatever tells us we're out of Kingston Falls and in the Big Apple now. We revisit Mr. Wing in Chinatown, where a group of corporate cronies are trying to buy his shop. They're working at the behest of Daniel Clamp, a New York City businessman who's always compensating for something. I develop the biggest buildings in New York. Daniel Clamp is a clear riff on then New York nuisance Donald Trump, whose boisterous ways and shady dealings made him unpopular in the Empire City. Gremlins 2 initially positions Clamp as the villain, but it ends up going easy on him, partly because of John Glover's wide-eyed boyish performance. Mr. Wing ain't interested in selling, which is a problem for Clamp, since this guy's not going anywhere. <coughs> The death of Mr. Wing removes the last obstacle to developer Daniel Clamp's long-delayed Chinatown project. Okay, never mind. Wing dies of off-screen-itis, a deadly disease that afflicts nearly 60% of all kill count victims. With no one around to run the store or check on any weird primates left behind, the demolition crew lets her rip. Oh, damn! Compared to his range of motion in the first one, Gizmo might as well be doing parkour here. I mean, Gizmo can walk now, mm -hmm. though he might want to walk a little faster than that. Across town, in time Square, we meet back up with Billy and Kate, who are saving up to get married by clocking into corporate jobs at Clamp Tower. The skyscraper, played by 101 Park Avenue, is modeled after Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue. Other Trump influences on Clamp include his autobiography, which looks very similar to Art of the Deal, as well as his obsession with metallic decoration. Only Clamp uses silver instead of gold. Kate's moved on from slinging drinks to slinging facts as a tour guide, and Billy is, uh, the concept artist for this movie. His chain-smoking boss is Marla Bloodstone. Stone, whose attitude is as dramatic as her choice of lipstick. It's a nuclear meltdown disaster, I mean it. Billy's trying to get promoted, but that's gonna be hard with security chief Forrester getting all up in his shit over a potted plant. Forrester is played by Robert Picardo, another Joe Dante regular and oh. silver medalist in the werewolf transformation oh. Olympics in 1981. He After was from the Howling? I never knew that. Wow. They decided against making Clamp the villain. Forrester picked up the slack. Mm -hmm. He shows it by firing fellow Dante regular Henry Gibson. That's an unauthorized break. Great period, my friend. You don't work here anymore. Back to the burbs with ya! Clamp Tower is more than just an office building. It's also got a TV studio, where Joe Dante cameos as oh, a director. Nice. He's shooting Grandpa Fred, the Grandpa mm -hmm. Munster looking horror host who's suffering from a mid death crisis. I went into broadcasting, I thought I was gonna do news, public affairs, something meaningful. Fred's played by Robert Prosky, last seen on The Kill Count making Christine. weird noises in Christine. The character is inspired by the way Al Lewis reprised mm -hmm. Grandpa Munster in the late 80s as a horror host. Hi, it's me, Grandpa, and I am gonna be your host on Super Scary Saturday on the I don't remember Adventure. this. Like me, Grandpa this. Fred wishes youths would give black and white films a chance. You know, Fred, you should run some of the classic horror movies like Frankenstein or Dracula. <laughs> All the great horror movies are in black and white. Mr. Clamp only likes color. This is a direct shot at TV mogul Ted Turner, Ted Turner, the other inspiration for Daniel Clamp. Turner colorized lots of black and white movies in the late uh, 80s yeah. for his TV stations. You know, for anyone who wished the zombies in Night of the Living Dead looked a little bit more like P.S. Clamp Tower <laughs> also has a gen- <laughs> God, I love <laughs> Is Ted Turner still alive? I think he is. Did you never heard but but damn <laughs> Billionaire Ted. Who remembered the billionaire Ted uh parody that they used to do on um Dirty E man? Yep, still uh 84 is still kicking it. <laughs> Genetics Research Lab. Sound crazy? It is! But it's got a fun name, the Splice of Life, and an awesome wow. evil scientist in charge. The horribly named Dr. Catheter, played by legendary mm -hmm. winner at life Christopher mm -hmm. Lee. His cloned Christopher flunkies Lee. Martin and Lewis show him their latest acquisition, Gizmo. They make him dance to Fats Domino, which shows off how far the animatronics had advanced. Mm -hmm. Original Gremlins effects artist Chris Wayless was unable to return for the new batch. He was busy doing effects for and directing. Ooh. The Fly 2, Fly Harder. His replacement was Rick Baker, one of the most successful special effects artists of all time. He redesigned Gizmo from the paws up, and even made him cuter than he was in the last movie. Mm -hmm. But his cuteness doesn't help him escape Soromon's grasp. Billy's tipped off to Gizmo's whereabouts by a delivery guy played by Raymond Cruz, mm -hmm. who we saw in Alien Resurrection, and who you've probably seen in Breaking Bad and Better Call 
us all. His future co-star Dean Norris appears at the end of this film as a SWAT team member. Good move, sir! Wow. There's so much Breaking Bad in the Gremlins wow. films. Billy acts as a technician to get past this snotty girl slash boy slash Pat. While the scientists are busy making ratteries, Billy finds Gizmo, who remembers the kid he spent a few days with six years earlier. <laughs> Billy re-kidnaps him and pulls a 28 days later to cover his tracks. Billy sticks Gizmo in a filing cabinet where the Mogwai breaks his widow hand. Poor baby. Like I said, gremlin technology had come a long way since 1984. Gremlins 2 was actually a lot of fun to make, and Gremlins 1 was not a lot of fun. <laughs> but Mogwai Zero was still the smallest and most fragile animatronic on set. That's why he spends a lot of the movie in a little Gizmo Gizmo. But hey, judging by his on-set behavior, maybe he deserved it. Here's your coffee, sir. A surprise visit from the big clamp himself cuts the reunion short. But don't worry, he's just a normal guy like everyone else. Look at the kids with the kites. That's warmth. I like warmth. He falls head over Gucci for Billy's art and pays him the highest compliment any CEO can, kind of learning his name. Bill, huh? The interest Clamp shows in him sparks Miss Bloodstone's interest in Billy's man thing. She invites him to dinner, and Billy accepts in order to keep her out of his other drawers. He asks Kate to grab Gizmo and Mogwai sit for the night, which is not her idea of paradise. That furry thing? I love how traumatizing the first movie was for everyone in Kingston Falls except Billy. Of course Kate would hate the little ghoulies. They're the second worst thing that ever happened to her on Christmas. Yep. Turns out between... Don't, 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 uh, James, damn it. <laughs> showings of Rambo, Gizmo's been watching MacGyver. If he also caught Adam's family, he might recognize original Gomez John Astin, out. showing off the world's most powerful water fountain. The jet stream ruins Billy's art uh -oh. and Gizmo's day when his lower lumbar supports new life all over again. This time, four new Easter eggy mogwais are spawned. George and Lenny, named after the characters in Of Mice and Men, Daffy the hyperactive one, and Mohawk, who's basically just Stripe 2.0. The ungrateful kids force their mog father to go explore Nakamagwai Tower and let Daffy do his best Gizmo impression in order to fool Kate. Gizmo, you're so hyper. As Kate takes King Wrong home, Marla takes liberties with her business dinner. Gosh. I'm feeling so vulnerable with you, Billy. He declines a friendly game of touch footballs, but can't make a clean getaway from the so-called ethnic restaurant here in Clamp Tower. That ethnicity being Canadian. How about some horn? I'd say she's up. had enough. Yeah. Between the red lipstick and the wrong rap thing, could this night get any worse? Oh, surprise! Fucking Futtermans. Reminder Futterman. that they survived their bulldozing yep. from the first movie, as mentioned in last week's Kill Count and the beginning of this movie. He was just kind of rattled. Well, I guess having a bunch of little monsters drive a snowplow through your living room could kind of do that to you. Well, he was almost killed. They're coping pretty well with the goblin trauma. Murray's nationalism hasn't skipped a beat. Do you know they got Russian guys driving cabs in this burg? By the time Billy and Kate try to swap Giz Foe for Giz Mo, it's after midnight, and the other furry fiends are taking oh, snack baths shit. and returning composer Jerry Goldsmith's Rocky Road. Wow. Damn, this Froyo place open after midnight? Tell my door dasher where it at. They can just look for the place that's loud as a club. It's even got an after hours Chippendales dancer as a manager. While most of the exterior shots were filmed in New York City, Gremlin 2 whose interior scenes were shot on sound stages at Warner Brothers Studio oh, in nice. Burbank, California. Jim Spencer returned as production designer to create this massive mall set, which cost between six and eight million dollars to make. With fully stocked shelves and working elevators to its second floor, it was one of the biggest sets ever built at Warner Brothers. It was designed so that you could take a camera and go into every store and go up elevators and out and shoot all sorts of things in continuous takes oh, if you Chelsea. wanted to. And we did at times. Billy tries to avoid a repeat of the first film by shutting off the building's water supply, but he's arrested by Burb star Rick Dukamon as a security guard who releases the duffel daffy. Better stop that little monster mm. before he eats something. He already ate something. Oh, oh yeah, him! Yes. Oh. Just don't let him snort baking powder then, or else he'll have muffins growing out of his nose. Oh. Kate posts bail at Mime O'Clock Sharp, but by then, we've already got a three gram oh. omelet cooking. And Gizmo ain't gonna be much help. The gremlified mohawk grabs Come the mohawk and channels the first movie's crew as he tortures him with bright lights, velcro, and making copies! Huh, 
1990 was a great year for photocopy gags in horror movies. After Marla tries to get more sex blood from Billy Stones, she's caught by Kate, who decides they should divor er, divide and conquer. Billy preaches the Three Commandments to the building's security team, who responds like snarky commenters online. What if one of them eats something at 11 o'clock, but then he gets something stuck in his teeth? What, what if they're eating in an airplane and they cross a time zone? The filmmakers knew the rules were flimsy the first time around, and this was their chance to officially poke holes in them. I mean, it's always midnight somewhere. <laughs> Oh! oh, wrong kind of poke holes. The Play Pals worker survives the attack, and we get a great first look at Rick Baker's ooier, gooier gremlins, now 100% more bald and slimy. Mm -hmm. Wait, does slimy count as wet? What about the wetness, Joe? Billy oh. scares off Mohawk, who, like his predecessor Stripe, is voiced by the cave of wonder that is Frank, Frank Welker. Welker. Howie Mandel returned as Gizmo, of mm -hmm. course, and other gremlin voices were done by Mark Dodson, Nancy McConnor, and Kirk Thatcher, whom we just saw in the kill count in Werewolf, Werewolf by Night. Night. Kate tries to keep calm and carry on with her tour giving duties, but her Paula Deen pit stop is interrupted by a surprise guest. Microwave Marge is basted into submission in a callback to the kitchen scene from the first film. Mm -hmm. But this time, George has learned from his ancestors' mistakes. My he uses it against his human oppressors and triggers the sprinkler system. Before you know it, baby's got bad uh, babies. Ew, nature can be a little NSFW sometimes. But hey, we're getting a look at gremlins being born in real time. Looks like they come out fully formed, like yeah. those dumb looking protomorphs or whatever. In the security room, oh, Forster shit. finally notices the creatures multiplying like Land Before Time sequels, but he still doesn't report it to the boss since he knows how busy CEOs can be. Oh. Let's do some memos. Unfortunately for Clamp, his receptionist gets replaced by a gremlin off screen, <laughs> and that guy is way worse at dictation. <laughs> Clamp gets some payback by sending this teenage mutant yep. kind of turtle into the shredder. Mm -hmm. Is it weird if I think that gremlin would taste good with chips? Billy arrives with Forrester to warn Clamp that James. <laughs> but they have to close the building before sundown to keep the gremlins from getting out into the city. Clamp is 100% on board now, so they just need to meet up with Kate, who's currently stuck on a faulty elevator. Sound alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Gremlexa. The gremlins and Russ Thorne attack Kate, but she manages to fight and fight and fight and fight and bite until village person Daffy sends the elevator plummeting to the ground. Kate survives, but the gremlins get turned into Nickelodeon slime. It's a little <laughs> confusing to count these out of focus shots, but the top appears to have nine gremlins and the busy bottom about 19. So let's put 28 on Daffy's tab. Crashing elevators can't stop all the gremlin mayhem, and they wind up on another TV set with famed film critic Leonard Maltin. He's giving a review of mm -hmm. the original Gremlins film. What's fun about a movie full of ugly, slimy, mean-spirited, gloppy little monsters yeah. who run amok and attack innocent people? In real life, Malton also gave a scathing review to the mm -hmm. first Gremlins movie, calling it Icky Mayhem. Dante invited him to cameo in wow. the sequel as the movie police, and Malton agreed to come on and get killed by some Gremlins, sticking a nasty- Come here! Despite his <laughs> nah, untimely right. demise, he gave Gremlins 2 a much better review. Over at the science oh, lab, Rodriguez. all hell has broken loose. Oh, yeah. What on earth is going on? Said the man holding a pod from the original Invasion of the mm -hmm. Body Snatchers, which appeared in the first movie as well. Wow. In fact, Dr. Cushing Catheter is one gobbledygooker-sized Easter egg. He's played by Christopher Lee, of course, mm -hmm. who played Dracula in the Hammer Horror films. Anthem the character's first name, Cushing, is named after Peter Cushing, who always foiled Dracman as Van Helsing. The gremlins break into the noun project labeled Potion Beakers, mm -hmm. allowing true cartoon insanity to unfold. Their escapades give us all kinds of gremlins, oh. like vegetable gremlin, electricity gremlin, and Gremlin, which works as a nice nod to Mr. Lee. This scene is, of course, what inspired My one babe. of the greatest Key and Peele sketches ever. You just said noun and gremlin, like you play Mad Libs. You just like a child. You have the brain of a child. If you've seen this movie, you have to watch this sketch. It's yes. the best form of esoteric Lord. humor. A lot of these extra gremlins were conceived of by Rick Baker. He was initially hesitant to work on a sequel with creatures he didn't create, but agreed to the job as long as he could make more diverse gremlins and mogwai. Every day that we shot, we made up stuff. You know, Joe says, you know what? What are we gonna have to do? Right, man. You know, I was like, well, I don't know. What do you want me doing? He goes, well, you know, I'm throw stuff. You know. I love how everyone has a Joe Dante impression. No, I don't think there's too many gremlins. You could probably have even more. The leader of noun gremlins is Brain Gremlin, whose thinking Brain. juice allows him to talk. I wanna. 
talk a little bit about what's going on in this room, because I think there are some fascinating ramifications here for the future. The now nearsighted brain gremlin is voiced by the departed Tony Randall, best known oh. as the uptight Felix in the Odd Couple TV show. With the power of thought, brain gremlin injects Bartok gremlin with genetic sunblock. It allows the day bat to escape, leaving only cross promotion in its way. <laughs> the bat gremlin's yeah. movements are mostly done through old school stop motion, using puppets created by Doug Beswick. Beswick also created the stop motion puppet for the dancing deadite Linda mm. in Evil Dead 2. The puppets used ball and socket joints for their points of articulation and were covered with a flexible foam latex that was painted by hand. Lucky for New York, Bat Gremlin restricts its attack to one fetter man and one fetter woman. What? Murray's weirdly specific PTSD crawls out of its mental dungeon mm -hmm. and he attacks the Bat Gremlin, yep. covering it in wet cement until it looks like a gray peanut butter baby. <laughs> the Bat takes off and lands on a nearby church where it becomes a gargoyle, threatening to ruin an otherwise great Disney animated movie. Fuck you, Jason Alexander! The original Gremlin screenwriter, Chris Columbus, wasn't available to write the sequel since he was busy directing Home Alone. Taking over for him was Charles S. Haas, who cameos as Dr. <laughs> Catheter's assistant. Dante and returning producer Michael Fennell told Haas to go absolutely nuts with the script. When he originally pitched Gremlins Take Manhattan, he planned on including more sightseeing around the city. Warner Brothers flinched at the price tag, so he narrowed down the chaos to an impossibly large skyscraper. Hey, at least it wasn't a cruise ship, dude. That skyscraper is getting messy, mm -hmm. though, since the salad bar is under attack. Mm -hmm. NFL legends Dick Buttkiss and Bubba Smith oh, shit. attempt to beat their vegetables. I ain't under know chaos I was doing it well. Including an appearance from serial sex offender. <laughs> since Gremlins 2 is more cartoonishly violent than the first film, counting kills is a little tricky. Sure, those people might have gremlin rabies now, but they're not dead, you know? Here, I'll count this Wilhelm Screamer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That sound effect is good enough to kill a stormtrooper, it's good enough to kill this guy. <laughs> As an evacuation occurs, Billy arrives to hear Catheter give a redemptive monologue. There's some things that man is not meant to displace. And some things they are, like a film reel, but not in the middle of the movie, come on! These gosh dang this gremlins have gone more meta Yo, than- This part here was genius. I will say this part was genius right here. <laughs> I don't care what anybody said. This was clever scene right here. I like this scene. Scream. They swap out the movie's third act for an old nudist exploitation <laughs> that may have inspired that DOA extreme beach volleyball game. This massive breach of the fourth wall was inspired by one of Dante's favorite movies, the Olsen and Johnson comedy Hell's a Poppin' from 1941. Just a moment, Woody. We're having a little trouble with this film. That film also featured its stars interacting with footage from other movies and made jokes using the film medium itself. Hey, how did you get up there? How did you get down there? <laughs> the audience, or the fake one, doesn't like it. I can't believe this. I mean... This is worse than the first one. The usher there is Paul Bartel, previously seen on this show, Chop not mall. eating Raul in Chopping Mall. There's only one man who can make these gremlins say their prayers and take their vitamins. Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. I'm glad wrestler actors have gradually gotten better and better. This Yo. was Hulk Hogan at one of his most popular points. He was in the middle of two back-to-back -back Royal Rumble mm. wins and a mercifully short string of starring movie roles. Yo. Hogan hulks up and yells at the gremlins to finish the movie, and they oblige, lest they get themselves body Sorry, slammed folks. like Andre. When it came <laughs> to this infamous meta moment, Warner Brothers was afraid that real audience members would think the film actually broke and walk out of the movie mm -hmm. theater. Test audiences proved them wrong, but when Dante and company made an alternate interruption exclusive to the VHS, rental stores wow. did get an awful lot of returns. And for the record, if you're watching that version, it adds three more gremlin kills to the count, courtesy mm -hmm. of John Wayne. Consider that your cut comparison. Nice. There was no new sequence for the DVD release, but a Belgian fan named Sasha Feiner made their own version as a short film in 2008. Fun stuff, since it sees the gremlins gremlin. inserted into Lord. a bunch of movies, including The Exorcist and The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. <laughs> Finally, for the novel of the film, this part sees Brain Gremlin attacking the author and writing the next couple of pages, during which he discusses a Gremlin's manifesto. Back in Gremlins 2, like the real Gremlins 2, Two. Grandpa Fred has failed to drop dead and is fulfilling his dream of becoming a news anchor. His one-man crew is Mr. Katsuji, a wayward member of Kate's tour group. Can you work a TV camera? Work a camera? Mm. Oh. 
Ah, I am the camera. Yeah, he'll make an anchor man out of you. Katsuji is played by Gede Watanabe, yep. who definitely yep. gives it his all, but man, do I hate this character. It's such a lazy stereotype of the photog Japanese oh, tourist yeah. from the 80s. Which happened, by the way, because that was right after Japan had its big time economic boom. Japanese citizens could afford to travel way more often and knew cameras well because of the country's longtime companies like Nikon and Fujifilm. The more you know. These two had better get rolling because the gremlins are way ahead of them in shots. They're serving up calf oh, juice and yeah. theater kid juice and uh... <laughs> What is that, Surge? Billy, Forster, and Catheter get back to the lab where Forrester meets our first Here female gremlin. <laughs> it's Greta Gremlin, alliteratively named as an homage to the great Greta Garbo. Bitch, you have me and little gremlin but JJ. Greta's in a <laughs> mata hurry to get laid and sets her sights on the security honcho. Yep. While they sin against nature, the doc tries to pull out a gun, but pulling out catheters only uh -huh. results in pain. Billy manages to free his army of one hand, but the electricity gremlin challenges oh, this sore old man to a wizard's duel. <laughs> is burned out of the Wicker Man, who should never have messed with nature. Hit it, hit it the the ride, double the fall. <laughs> After Catheter dies hard, Billy is shot at by Mohawk, mm. who now has a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. He's also got a, wait, a spider potion. Ho, ho, no! Billy oh, meets shit. up with Clamps, just as Electric Gremlin places a call to collect his life. Somebody saves him! Billy yep. traps the Gremlin by putting him on hold forever. Best mm -hmm. not do that to your Gremlin and Gremlin, Bill. Despite the Gremlin's Muzak imprisonment, <laughs> <laughs> Clamp figures this is the end of the world. He changes his TV station's programming accordingly. We hope you have enjoyed our programming, but more importantly, we hope you have enjoyed life. This is based on an actual tape Ted Turner kept on hand in case the Cold War got too hot. There's also an excellent, creepy as fuck horror take on it on Local 58, the scariest YouTube channel I've ever watched. They hatch a plan where Billy will do most hey, of- Hey, guess you know Wonderman. If you ever, oh my God, I, my, my grandma had, growing up as a kid, my grandma had an old school TV, they had the old school TV that only had BHF, HF, whatever, and everything. At one time, TV station would go off completely. Like, it wasn't, no TV show station was on at the 10. They, they, this is like way before they had paid programming, takeover, late night stuff. This or late night, uh, sit in the kid reruns, stuff like that. No, the ch channels they'll have a little uh, saw spangle banner, and then and then it'll just be pitch, just be blank, TV just be blank, just be stacks or whatever. It is crazy. I, I kid you not. If you if you have grandpa parents, they will tell you, grandparents, even parents will tell you that shit for real. It's not, it's no lie. I remember that. I kid you not the work and the boss will take all the credit. They'll trick the gremlins to the lobby by setting the clocks forward to nighttime, then drop a big fake night sky curtain and give them some of that world famous New York sunshine. Clamp uses his pneumatic bank tube of an elevator to get outside. Ooh, any dum-dums in there? Mr. Futterman sees him and somehow avoids the entire city's eyeballs as he slinks into the tube to get inside. Meanwhile, Grandpa Fred says, fuck it, he'll do it live. He does a sit down interview with Brain Gremlin, which shows off how well Tony Randall's voice performance was served by Rick Baker's animatronics. Baker used a machine called a Gilder Fluke to interpret wow. Randall's pre-recorded dialogue into muscle movements on the puppet's face. First they'd go through and program the upper lip, then go through again with the lower lip, then the tongue, and then finally the jaw. It took a while, but the end result wow. is impressive. The interview goes well until Brain goes full Joker and kills a gremlin wearing a silly hat. <laughs> Was that civilized? No, clearly not. If you saw the Joker, you knew why he called full Joker. Fun, but in no sense, civilized. I love Fred's casual get the fuck out of here move. He ain't going out like the hero. <laughs> Kate finds Marla caught in a spider web. The femme fatale admits that she hit on Billy, but that he was a good loyal boy. So Kate seemingly forgives her, just in time to see an oncoming spider gremlin. With Billy and Mr. F miles away, or maybe like a room away. Hard to oh, tell. they skip when um he saved Billy from getting um getting attacked by a uh, by a ducky uh gremlin. This place. Who could come save Kate and Marla? Oh shit, yeah, OG Grogu. Where the hell you been, little buddy? Oh, that's right, getting absolutely tortured by Stripe V2 Mohawk. 
who has now become the Spider Gremlin. Gizmo's been montage training so he can take his revenge. Equipped with the staples of war, Gizmo shoots his Gizmo into the Spider Gremlin. It kills him, burning him down into a patented gross gooey gremlin mess. If melting gremlins ain't enough of a direct reference to the first movie for you, don't worry. Mr. Futterman mentions Abraham Lincoln, which triggers another horrifying holiday story from Kate's childhood. This man with this Honey, beard um, and a hat looked just like Abe Lincoln. Honey, I really don't think we've got time for this now, you know? Billy must <laughs> save a fortune on Hallmark cards. <laughs> Oh, yeah, now, see, Gary Sales rewatched the first one, now I get why she went, he went there. Also must save on Broadway tickets, since the show is being brought to him. It's time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time to melt the puppets on the Gremlin show tonight. These strange creatures now appear to be mounting what seems to be a musical number. Brain Gremlin launches into a rendition of Frank Sinatra's New York, New York, mm -hmm. which originated in the 1977 Scorsese film of the same name. This bonkers sequence puts the first film's bar scene to shame with a Rick Baker's dozen worth of gags, including line dancing gremlins, synergy gremlins, mm -hmm. bartender gremlins, universal monster gremlins, mm -hmm. domestic terrorist gremlins, and a super elaborate reference to the Depression era Busby Berkeley musical mm -hmm. Dames, with Greta Gremlins subbing in as the star attraction. Rick Baker had to design all these damn gremlins from scratch, going from sketch to sculpt to mold to rubber that then had to be painted and have hair punched in. So much work for such fleeting images. Most of these guys only last a single shot. Oh shit, sometimes less. <laughs> Before our heroes can flash the rest, the forecast calls for a change of plans. With no sunlight to melt these very extra little guys, Billy skips the Tremor style planning scene and just orders folks around, telling Futterman to grab the fire hose, Kate to go to a telephone, and Marla, smoke. <laughs> yep. On his way to the hose, Futterman's Dilophosaurus by a gremlin with what I can only hope is snot. He retaliates by throwing the mucusy gremlin mm. down an elevator shaft, killing him like he were Drake Ramore. Murray interrupts Grem Lin-Manuel Miranda's high note with high pressure from the hose. Billy cues Kate to put the call with electric gremlin through, which electrocutes the go. <laughs> Or yep. more accurately, electro-uglifies them. Mm. You thought stripe melting was disgusting? I mean, just look at this. So much, uh, well. Well, I can't say what it looks like on television. The Hemogoblins turn into Hemoglobin, and Brain Gremlin's plans to take over the world are thwarted. Thus ends another grotesque and gooey gremlin genocide. There's no magic trick to figuring out how many gremlins were in this place, so I had to do it the old-fashioned way. Assign it to Josh to count. By his count, there were 445 yeah. gremlins who died faster than Brain Gremlin's Broadway prospects. Mm -hmm. Add one in for Electric Gremlin who was used as a weapon and also, I guess, died. Thank you, Josh. To portray this kill-counting nightmare, Mark Stetson and his team created a quarter-scale version of the mall lobby. The set was elevated so puppeteers could operate the mini gremlins from beneath. When it came time for them to die, they'd pull on cords underneath the platform, causing them to crumple. Cool stuff. Mm. Clamp arrives with the cavalry and starts dishing out happy endings <laughs> for all. He promotes Grandpa Fred and Mr. Katsuji to the news team, hires Billy to design a small Kingston Falls-like town, and begins an inappropriate office relationship with Marla. That last point was actually just a coincidence, not a nod to Donald Trump's extramarital affair with Marla Maples. That wouldn't become public knowledge until after production had wrapped. Oh yeah, Clamp also licenses Gizmo. It's funny, I look at him, you know what I see? What's that, sir? Dolls with suction cups staring out mm. car windows. And of course, it, those are actual well. things. Kate's happy ending is that she and Billy will get married, and also, uh, I don't know, she's not dead? The movie ends with Greta Gremlin's happy ending, yep. which is an actual happy ending. As the last of her species, she's looking to reproduce, so good thing she's found Forrester. You're the man now, dog! Oh man, we're gonna fuck, huh? How many <laughs> new kills? <laughs> Yo, Jay's been killing me this whole kill count. He said, oh man, they gonna fuck. Oh God. <laughs> oh my God. This new batch of gremlins oh, at us? Let's find out and get to the dump. Let's find out and get uh -oh. to the number number. Here we go. Welcome to the kill count. Ah, uh, shit. Eddie's not in here. This is a diss or, or an advertisement. Rizzy Yes! 
Oh, her. What up, world? It's me, Brizzy, and today Brizzy. I'm going to be doing impressions of 80s horror films. Starting oh, yeah, with she... a classic. Oh, yeah. I think she was on, um, oh, one of them, she was on one of them shows where they, the, they had the guest, it was a, um, guess the, uh, the celeb. Oh, it was, um, the one with the, uh, kids. Oh, yeah. I think it was the one with the, uh, the, the parents and the, the grandparents and the, uh, grandkids was going to, I forgot the name of that, uh, that, uh, Mm, who I forgot who hosted it. It was like a game show they had for a minute at one point, like uh, Bridge and Gap or Bridge and Generation, or something like that. Gremlins. <clears throat> Gizmo, poo -poo, rat. <laughs> was a good little guest spot. No, no, no. It's more like Gizmo, caca. <laughs> all right, all right. If it's so easy, you do an impression of me. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> I've never said that. <laughs> uh -oh. Today we're looking at every evolution of Gremlins animated. Oh, and uh, the the Mogwais too. Fuck Mogwais! <laughs> oh, hey, hey, ow, ow! Oh, wait, 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 wait! We still haven't done Pin Ant's evolution. No. Ah! Uh, no, 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 no. Draw Disney too. Draw Disney too. Oh my God. It's, a, it's one of the best movies of all time. It's the first full. Look at, oh my god, look at them back there. <laughs> this is, that's right, this is how they got started. Oh, wow. An animated feature. And I think. Watch this movie. So I get this gremlin out of here. Dude, are you kidding? I would do waxwork three Oh, like Billy. Will you excuse me for a minute? Hey, Gremlins, what? quit messing with the YouTube and just let James get to the numbers, okay? No, I don't Otherwise, when we do a sequel, I'll make sure every single one of you is CGI. <laughs> YouTube's all yours, James. Thank you. <laughs> they did this. James, you did this. Oh my god, I even broke by the old. That's how they got started. I've got Joe Disney. That's why I've got that's how they got started. Oh man, can remember the show, but I've got that's where they came from. Wow, thank you, Zach. God, Zach, I'm trying to run a show around here. <laughs> we played real loose with the rules here and counted four human deaths in Gremlins 2, mm -hmm. all of whom were men, I think. Let's bounce this blue ball out of here, though, so we can see the 480 gremlins we counted. Holy shit. For comparison's sake, Gremlins 2 had one more human kill than the original, and more than three times the gremlin deaths. That's how you do a sequel. With a runtime of 106 minutes, that left us with a human kill on average every 26 and a half minutes. As for gremlin kills, well, we averaged one every 13 and a quarter seconds. Goddamn! I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the call waiting from hell. Sure, it's technically a lot of kills, but come on, just look at that slop. It's the final meltdown. Dol Machete for lamest kill goes to Mr. Wing, because he didn't even get a death scene. And the gold medal for greatest gremlin obviously goes to Greta Gremlin. Yep. Look at her, she's fabulous! There aren't enough yeses in the world for this queen. And that's it. Gremlins 2 came out in 1990 and cost a shit ton of money to make. Despite their investment, Warners opened it against Disney's Dick Tracy, which caused a box office return that nearly killed the franchise. Since then, all we've seen of Gizmo is in a Mountain Dew commercial, but there's apparently an animated series next year, so we can look forward to that. I hope everyone has been having happy holidays. We'll be screaming in the new year since our first episodes back in 2023 will be the Scream Recounts, finally! Oh! Okay! Well... I might got idea what's gonna be my next my next uh uh series because you know folks gonna want that. Nice, nice, ah nice, that is nice. I wonder if it's also gonna cue the uh, kill count for the newest screen though. But nice. But anyway, other than that, good job, good job. Hope y'all enjoy your New Year's, New Year's see y'all in twenty twenty three. With the kill count and the kill cover the polls, and the kill count thing we start with a new poll, and then the week after that we'll be we'll be finished. We'll be continuing. We'll continue the Chucky series with the Chucky series. This um as the break with Chucky, season one though was the chopping half, and after that week, just for a lot of folks, 
I'm not going to put it in the, in the poll. I'm just going to just do it. We're going to take a look at the Stranger Things series. Well, there and that. You know what? Nah, I take that back. The Chucky series is going to be part of the series. The series. The Chucky, the Chucky series. The TV series is going to be part of my new TV series week. And after I do that, I will do Stranger Things. And the week after that, I will pull up, um, and during, and during that week, while I do that, I will pull up a new, uh, franchise polls. And I got a feeling it was probably going to win, so I'm going to put them on there anyway, but I got a feeling that's going to be the winner. As you heard the announcement, the screen recount is, is, is out. It's going to be it. But other than that, if you like my reaction, like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Happy New Year's to those. If I don't see y'all in New Year's, and if I don't make a video before New Year's, y'all enjoy your New Year. It's your boy T-Bear signing off. One love.